thank you so much for joining us here today. So welcome to the Smith Master of Finance Information session. Today's a special session where we're going to have uh, a, a, one of our uh, former students joining us to discuss the, his experience during the program. So we're going to be talking about life after the your MFIN degree, uh, just talking to him about his experience during the program and his experience after the program. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Just like to let you know that if you are registered for this information session, then you will receive a copy of the recording after the session is over. If you would like to see any of our recordings from previous sessions, you can go on to our YouTube channel on with Smith School of Business, and then you'll see all of the recording from all different webinars, not only from the Smith Master of Finance program, but other programs as well. So if you're interested in any other programs and you're interested in any of those sessions, then you can go there and view the recordings. So we will leave some time at the end for any questions that you may have. As I mentioned, we're going to do a, have a nice session with Romel, who is be joining us soon. Uh, but first, let's start off with a land acknowledgement. So Smith Toronto is situated on the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat and the Piton First Nations, the Seneca and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We are grateful to be able to live, learn, and play on these lands. What is the Master of Finance program? So this is a one-year full-time while you work program offered out of our Smith Toronto facility. So we're conveniently located downtown Toronto. So no, you do not have to go to Kingston to take this program. No, you do not have to quit your job. If you are interested in taking this program, you can take this program while working. This program, I'll talk to you about when this program is offered. And what this program does, is it provides you with a deeper and broader understanding of finance. So what we will do is equip you with the knowledge and tools to immediately move from theory to real world application. So as a graduate of this program, you will have a solid understanding of the current financial climate and market trends, the ability to communicate ideas and information accurately and concisely. So my name is Gary Hines. I am the director for the Master of Finance here at the Smith School of Business. Uh, if you are an applicant for the program, one of the steps in the application process will be an interview with myself. One of my roles is to go through these information sessions to tell you about the program and tell you about the fantastic opportunities that await you if you are to take this program. Joining me today is Romel Sabat, who will be talking to you about his experience in the program. He'll introduce himself a little bit later. As you see, he currently works as an equity research senior associate at Scotiabank Global Market, Global Banking and Markets. So what is this program that we're discussing here today? So as I mentioned, it is a full-time while you work program conveniently located in our 200 25,000 square foot teaching facility, downtown Toronto. So our program has one start date every year. We usually start our program in June and the program run all the way until April. Our classes are held once a week on an evening. So if you are working downtown Toronto, we're very conveniently located or minutes away from Bay Street, minutes away from Union Station. And our classes usually occur at 6 p.m. and goes all the way till 9.30. And then it happens every alternating Saturday. So during the time in the program, you will be taking two courses concurrently. So let's say, for example, you're taking a course on a Monday. So that course will happen from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And then another course will happen every other Saturday uh, for the full day. And that course will happen from, let's say, 8.30 to 4.30 or 9 to 5. So it'll be for the full day, you'll be taking it. So every other Saturday and every week during the Monday. We are located at 200 Front Street West, so very conveniently located. When our program begins, you will spend one week. So if you are working full time, you will be required to take a week off and spend one week with us in Kingston, Ontario. Then we have a second session uh, in person, three days downtown Toronto. So that one, you do not have to go to Kingston for it. You will have it at our facility downtown. And throughout our program, you will receive support. You will receive career support from our Career Advancement Center, ongoing coaching. Uh, and then you have the opportunities to take part in different clubs, case competition, and networking events. 
So let's talk about all of the courses that make up this MFIN program at the Smith School of Business. So in order to complete your degree, you will have to take a total of 10 courses. Eight of those courses are going to be core courses, and then you'll be able to select two out of five elective courses. Our programs are, is made up of a bunch of different faculty. So we have tenured research-based profs who live and work in Kingston, but they come and they teach in the program on an evening. And then we have also adjunct faculty. So people who work on Bay Street and they teach on the program of this, on the side. This is a great combination and helps to, to make up the experiential learning that you will get during the program. And our program begins with our course in corporate finance and financial statement analysis, quantitative analysis and economics. And you will go on to advanced financial modeling, equity markets, fixed income instruments and markets, advanced portfolio management, communication and finance and derivatives. So advanced, one of our course, advanced financial modeling, this is taught by formerly known as Marquee Group. Now they're called Training the Street. So they will, what you will be doing in that course is learning how to build a financial model from scratch. If you've recently, or if you're interested in writing the CFA, you would recently have noticed that there is a financial modeling component. That course was designed by the individuals that teach in this program. So one of the individuals that teach in this program since its inception, they designed that course for the CFA. And now you have the opportunity to learn from them for you know, eight sessions. You get to learn from them how to build a financial model from scratch. Our communication and finance course, that's one of those other courses that, you know, it's just a, one of those differentiators from the CFA exam where, you know, a lot of you have a lot of financial knowledge, but sometimes it's difficult to be able to communicate that. So that course helps you in your communication skills. It helps you really advance and develop your communication skills to be able to communicate your complex, those complex uh, theories that you have, those knowledge that you have, to tell anyone, to let anyone be able to understand those different financial concepts. Let's look at our derivatives courses right now, sorry, our elective courses. So out of these five courses, you will be required to take two, and that will wrap up all of the courses for the program. Every year we look at the courses that we have offering and we wanna make sure that what we're offering is relevant to the marketplace. So we have financial technology and innovation, intro to alternative investment, investment banking, AI and finance and sustainable finance. As you can see, a lot of these topics that we're going to be covering throughout the time of the program is very relevant to what's happening today in the market. We're seeing so much movements right now within AI and finance, sustainable finance that you know it's very relevant in today's market please note that these electives are subject to change depending on faculty availability or if we decide that you know one of these courses may not be as relevant as it is was in the past so we are we can change these courses as well but these are the courses that we've been offering for the last couple of years so I know I mentioned to you that this program is a full-time program that runs out of our Smith Toronto facility. And I mentioned also that we will be spending one week in Kingston. So let's talk a little bit more about that in-person session in Kingston. So the image that you're looking at on your screen here, this is Goods Hall. It's located in Kingston, Ontario. So this is our main campus. This is the Smith School of Business, which hosts our full-time MBA program, our commerce program, or MIB program. So these are the full-time programs that require you to be in Kingston for them. And you may be asking yourself, well, why do I have to go there? Um, why can't I just take the program full-time in Toronto? So we do this for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is that, you know, because this is a, a while you work program, it doesn't have like that full time feel. It sort of feels like a, a part time program because you're coming in the evening. You don't get an opportunity to really meet and engage with your classmates. We want you to be able to feel like a full time student for that week. We want you to be able to get to know your classmates, to establish those relationships and make those connections. I've heard, I've heard of countless stories. Just last week, I met with one of our alum. Our, our alum uh, they told me that they were able to get hired through a referral because of a relationship that they formed with someone during this session in Kingston. That's one of the reasons why this session is mandatory for anyone interested in taking this program. 
we also get to complete one of our courses during that week. So corporate finance and financial statement analysis will be completed during this one week in Kingston. So it is a very jam-packed and busy week, but it's one of the best experiences you're going to have during your time in the program. We have fun activities planned, such as our Smith Challenge. We do our thousand island boat cruise as well. So it's really enjoyable. Romel may have an opportunity to tell you a little bit about his experience during the in-person session in Kingston. We only go there for the beginning of the program, however, and the next time you'll be there is for graduation. So let's talk about other areas where we take experiential learning to the next level. So not only do you have an opportunity to, you know, learn from, learn by doing uh, for during our courses, but you have an opportunity to take that knowledge that you've, you've been amassing throughout the program and take it to the next level. We have case competitions that we're typically a part of every year. So we have our Smith Women in Finance. That's one of our clubs here at the school. What they do is that they get representation from other schools and they have a case competition every year. Uh, so we get great representation from other people, obviously great opportunity for our, our women in finance to build some leadership skills as well. We are typical participants in CFA Ethics Challenge, CFA Research Challenge, the Van Berkham Small Cap Case Competition, and a National Investment Banking Competition. These are excellent opportunities for you to get some experience in experiential learning, but also to grow your network and take yourself out of your comfort zone. So many people are nervous about presentations and they're very scared. And I always challenge people, get out of your comfort zone and take part in these competitions. It's an excellent opportunity for you to just develop some additional skills and presentation, research, and, and you know working together in a team. It's an excellent opportunity for you to develop these soft skills, which can be invaluable in the work. Workplace. So we really encourage people to do take part in these competitions. You have an opportunity to be part of different clubs. You can be a class executive. So we have a class president that rep is representing, you know, the student body on a whole. They are elected by the student body. Uh, so you have an opportunity to be part of that executive team. We also have the Smith Women in Finance, as I mentioned earlier. They what their role is is they work to get you know promote and get representation of women in finance, and they have different networking event, mentorship events, and they host the case competition. And then we have QAF. QAF stands for the Queen's University Alternative Asset Fund. It's a fund of fun, and it's completely student run and student managed. And these students are managing real money. So it's one of its one of a kind in Canada where we have students managing a portfolio of over five hundred thousand dollars. So Romel was a very big part of the experiential learning experience. He took part in our CFA research challenge. He was part of the class executive. He was a part of Quaff. So he did a lot of things, and he's going to give. He, we're going to give him an opportunity to talk about his experience doing all of these things in a little bit. Uh, so for those of you just joining, please note that this session is being recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording after. All right, so there are other opportunities for you to get involved. We do have workshops. Uh, we have merger and modeling, capital restructure and modeling. This is also taught by the gentlemen to teach the advanced financial modeling course, uh, Training the Street. So they run this uh, modeling workshop for our students, which is completely optional. We also have CFA prep for different for people who are writing either level two or level three of the CFA examinations. We do have a prep course. All of these things are included in your fees. We are a proud partner of the CFA and Kaya. So if you are writing different levels of the CFA, we do have scholarships opportunity available for the CFA and for if you're writing the Kaya examination. Uh, if they are when they have different events, we have a CFA ambassador, student ambassador in the program, uh, get invited to different events. There's also opportunities for employment <laughs> that we, we would receive from the CFA. So there, this is a great, excellent partnership that we have, and we're very proud to continue this partnership with the CFA and Kaya. We're also a part partner of the Canadian Olympic Committee and Game Plan. 
uh, what game plan does, what, what we, the relationship we have is game, with game plan is that we have a mentoring opportunity. So what we do is that we pair our current students with former Canadian Olympic athletes, uh, and then we help them run through a stock market simulation. Uh, so it's a really great opportunity for our students to give back. All right, so this is this is this was a very high level information on the program, but now I'd like to introduce Romel to the bring Romel into the conversation to talk about his experience in the program. So Romel, I'll give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. Thanks, Gary. So uh, my name is Romel. I'm born and and uh, and raised in Montreal, and uh, so I did my undergrad at the University of Montreal, and I was working at the bank. Maybe we'll talk about that later. I was working. Um, uh, as, as, a re, as a retail banker and then I wanted to I was studying for a CFA exam so I passed level one level two and then I was learning more about finance and I really wanted to dig into finance and so I applied to a few graduate programs including uh, the master in finance at Queens and I decided to join this one right after I passed the CFA level three I, I joined the program I started the program and it was a great experience. Maybe I can talk about that later. And so after graduating, I worked, uh, I did, a, I had an internship in private equity. And then I joined, after the, my internship, I joined Scotiabank uh, in the equity research team. And maybe we could talk about that later too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I was trying to remember, were you also a part of Game Plan? Were you also a mentor in Game Plan or were you not? No, I don't think that was on my time. Okay, it was probably after. Okay, so tell me about your current role as you're an equity research uh, senior associate. Tell me a, a little bit about that. Like, what do you do? Sure. So, so what we do in equity research is that we cover stocks. So right now, I'm I'm specializing in recent real estate, so I cover about twenty uh, stocks. So it's uh, I'm actually the associate of someone who covers uh, the stocks. So technically, we're one team of one analyst and one associate. And my analyst is a top ranked analyst in, in real estate in Canada. So we cover 15, uh, 15 REITs and Brookfield Corporation and Brookfield Asset Management. So our job is to analyze the companies. We build financial models on them. And then we come up with target prices. And we recommend a buy or a hold or a sell very rarely on, on those stocks. And our, our clients are basically institutional investors like the pension funds, mutual funds, managers, uh, large uh, uh, institutional money managers, hedge funds. Uh, so those those are our clients, and and some. So what we do uh, regularly is that we publish re research reports on. It could depend depending. It could be on a specific stock. It could be on the industry. So recently, for example, we wrote a research report on the fall economic statement published by by the federal uh, government, um, and it was focused on apartments and residential. In, in Canada, so so our research report is are read by a lot of people in in Canada, including corporations and and money managers. Must be a very interesting time to be in that specific area with everything yeah. that's going on. <laughs> so much happening in real estate right now. Like it's you got office on one side and you got residential on the other side. It's like it's crazy to see the dynamics going. Yeah, I can I can only imagine. So you mentioned earlier that, you know, you applied to different programs. Uh, I'm curious because I actually don't know the answer to this. So why did you choose uh, Queens to pursue your master's of finance? So um, there are two main reasons. Well, three, actually. First of all, Queens graduate program is one of the top programs in Canada. It's, it's globally recognized. That was number one. Number two, the program was only one year. So was it, it's an accelerated program. So if we compare it to the likes of McGill, and University of Toronto, these are two-year programs. So it's really good to have that extra year where you could already start uh, working and, and having a job and making money instead of uh, wasting an extra year studying. Uh, so you could, you could accomplish the same thing in one year instead of two, so that's great. And number two is also, um, uh, it's part-time. So it, it allows you to, to do the, the program while studying. The other ones are full-time. And Correct me if I'm wrong, you did, which level were you writing in terms of the CFA while you were in the program? Was it level so two already, or, no, or I you already finished? Did, yeah. yeah, so I did level, level. I wrote level three and then the next day I had to go to, to, to Kingston. To oh, okay. It was oh. literally like <laughs> one day back to back. It was, yeah. 
All right. So tell me about your your experience in the program, because I know you you did a lot. You were really involved. And so tell me about your experience. Like what what drove you to do, I guess, the research challenge? Um, also part of Quaff, like what, what encouraged you? What was the driving force behind all doing all of these things? Yeah, so so I had a goal when I joined the program, I really wanted to get into capital markets and equity research. And so my goal was to do this. And I know it's really hard to get in. And so the first thing I did, even during the first week that we had, I, I went to see our career, coach career and I asked her, I told her, what should I do uh, to be able to get into equity research? And she told me, um, equity research is really hard to get in. Maybe get one or two people from the program, maybe three that makes it into, into equity research. And so you really have to do everything. You have to be a top student and you have to be involved in everything. And so from, some, from the get-go, every time I, I saw an opportunity to get involved into something, I took it. And the first thing that came up was uh, um, the, uh, becoming the class president. And so I, I did it all. Yasin and I jo- joined together, as you might remember. Yeah, I do. And so, and so, so I, that, was, that was the first thing. And then the other opportunities that came up were the, um, the COAF, the, the associations. And so I joined COAF right, right off the bat. And I got involved. And then the, the case competitions came up. I think that was closer to the middle of the year. And um, I had to pick one of the case competitions. I was hes- hesitating between the CFA Research Challenge and the Investment Banking Case Competition. But uh, I decided to go with the CFA Research Challenge because it's, um, it's an international competition. And so we, we were competing against university across the globe. And so it's globally recognized as well. So I thought it was a better opportunity for me to, first of all, learn, learn more about equity research and, <clears throat> and, uh, and participate in the big case competition. And it was really, really nice experience. If you want, I could talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, if memory serves me correct, you, your, your team went on to represent us in New York. That's correct, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So there's, there's three levels. So there's the... Um, there's the regional, there's the inter- international, and there's the global. And so we won the regional one. We were competing against 13 universities in Ontario, including Ottawa and Waterloo. And we won. Usually Waterloo wins F- almost every year. I think they won, when I, when I was doing it, I think they won eight years out of t- uh, 10 or, 12 or 12, 11, something like that. And so we beat them by a, by a big margin. And so we, we, we won the regional chat, uh, competition. And so we went to New York. Everything was paid. We got a $1,000 uh, check, I think. And plus, our, everything was paid in New York. And so we went to New York for like a, a few days. I think it, it might have been a weekend or maybe a week. I can't remember. But um, we stayed there a few days. And then uh, we were competing against 50 universities, the, the, the 50 winners of their respective regional uh, regions. So So there was... It was it was all America. So you, you could tell, there was people from the states, people from Mexico, from LATAM. So they were all uh, university students, and so we we competed against them. We made it to the finals. We lost against Mexico uh, against Mexico by a few points, but it was a great experience. And um, I met a lot of people. I met people. I mean, I actually met people from Swiss. We became friends, and we're still in contact today. That's nice. That's excellent. Yeah. So what advice would you give to prospective or current students who are interested in getting into your field, your, your area, uh, equity research? What advice would you give? Um, so I think this program is really good. Uh, it's, a great, it's very good to prepare you to get into equity research, especially in terms of financial model, knowledge, in terms of financial modeling. And what I would add on top of that is be involved in everything, learn how to how to value companies uh, like he, I was I did a lot of research reports on my own like I wrote my own research reports just to prepare myself I built a bunch of financial models just for fun just to prepare myself and I think that helped me a lot during my current job and so when I whenever I went into interviews um, like I, I would kill every test that would send send my way very very easily I always made it on top of the interview uh, uh, the, p- the potential candidate list just because I was so comfortable with Excel modeling and, and my financial mo- uh, my financial knowledge was really on point. 
the other thing is uh, is also keep track of what's happening in news every day. So every day, I, and I still do this. I watch CNBC on YouTube just to get get a sense of what's happening in the markets. So in the interviews, for example, whenever they asked me, okay, so what's happening in the markets right now? I would list the, the whole thing, everything that is happening right now. And there was some, most, some, sometimes I'd be really impressed. Just uh, So it's really like you have to have that passion that, you know, you, if that's what you really want to do, then you have to have that passion and really be committed to it. That's great. I only have a couple more questions and then hopefully you can stick around until the end to answer any questions that anyone uh, joining the call has. Uh, how did you, this is a question that I get, how did you get into Quaff? Because I know a lot of people are interested in Quaff. Like, how did you, like, is there any secret that you can share with anyone who is who are interested in getting or being part of Quaff? I don't think there's any secret. It's just another interview like all the others. So I remember, um, I don't know if it, if that's how it still works, but when when so we alternate the executive roles with the MBAs because they start six months before us, and then when we join, we're new and they're they're kind of six months in, so they become the executives. And so, so I remember doing the interviews with them, and I think you have to pick what uh, what you want to do within the Quaff. And so I picked my, uh, my the portfolio that I really wanted to do. And so I went to the interview just like any other interview, very well prepared. Um, very motivated to be in and uh, just showing that, that passion for the for investing and and just show them that I really wanted to be in the in the um, in the Quaff Association and that I'm, I, I wanted to get involved and I, I actually have had a really good experience there I was involved I learned a lot I met a lot of people so I thought it was a really great experience that's great that's that's great that's great advice and, and my final question for you is you did a lot uh, during the program how did you manage all of these things in terms of your, your time? Because you had to study, you were, well, you were the class president, you did the CFA research, you were a part of Quaff. Like, how did you manage all of this? Because I hear a lot of people saying, like, my, my concern is, like, time management. So how did you manage all of these things? Well, it's all about being focused and, and concentrating all of your time into being productive. So, like, instead of wasting time on doing stuff that are not bringing me closer to my goal, I would do stuff that would bring me closer to my goal. So for example, if I if I if I'm not studying, then I'm I'm working on on a project or I'm working on, on a case competition or I'm working with Quaff. Or if I'm not doing any of those, then I'm coffee chatting, networking. So instead of you know wasting time or wasting a day not doing anything, um, I, I used to spend every every hour of my waking life doing something to get me closer. So either networking or studying um and obviously you have to prioritize so the first priority was to get good grades so studying was priority number one when i feel ready i move on to the the other stuff like quaff case competition and when i have nothing to do with that then i would set up coffee chats and, and network All right. All right. or make uh, make good relationships with the people i was studying with Great advice. So thank you so much, Romel. Hopefully you can hang, out, hang around till the end to answer any questions that anybody else has around your experience or any advice. Uh, so thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Gary. All right. So uh, if you could just hang around until the end, and uh, then we'll ask, answer any questions that anyone has in the chat. All right. So you heard it from Romel. Uh, Romel was a graduate of the program in 2019. Uh, so He's, he'll hang around till the end to answer any questions that you may have. So let's talk about the application process uh, for the program. So if you are interested in applying for the program, it's pretty simple. All, all we need from you is, oops, sorry, all we need from you is a copy of your resume and an unofficial transcript to get the process started. That, that application does not go into a black hole. You will be paired with an application advisor. That is Jen Nair, who is also on this call today that may be answering any of your questions in the chat as well. Jen Mayer will be working with you throughout your entire application process, answering any and all of your questions and making sure that you are successful in your application process. Let's look at what you need to apply. There is no application fee for to apply to the program, all we need is your unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume, and then we can best help advise you. 
what we look for for your application is an undergraduate degree, because of course this is a master's program, minimum, minimum of two years work experience. If you do have less than two years work experience, we do accept exceptional candidates uh, who have a strong GMAT or CFA level one, an undergrad in business or economics and strong internships. So this, that's for the people who have less than two years work experience. We will require our students to have successfully completed the GMAT or successfully completed CFA level one or a GRE score or a CPA from North America. So that's a requirement to be in the program. To wrap up your profile, we would need letters of reference, two letters of reference, your resume, a cover letter, and the final step is an interview with me. So these are what we require for you to have your, to get admitted into the program. If you're concerned or questioning whether or not you qualify, uh, the best way for us to answer that question is for us to get a copy of your resume because it paints a, a better, it gives us a better sense of who you are as a candidate for the program. We, we're, it's difficult to answer one-off questions without getting that full scope because we do look at different areas of your experience to determine whether or not you can be, you'll be a successful candidate for the program. In terms of fees, we have an all-inclusive fee. Uh, so everything in these fees are covered, your tuition, books, um, if you were taking part in any of the case competitions, if you are doing meals, uh, your meals and accommodations for the in-person sessions in Kingston and in Toronto will be covered. So for domestic students, your tuition will be 39,542. International students, 74,500. So all of this fees covers everything, as I mentioned, from your tuition, the case competitions, if you're traveling. So as Romel talked about, like his trip was covered for New York, all of these things are covered in your tuition fee or covered in your program fee. If you are interested in applying for the program, just go to smithqueens.com slash MFIN, and then we will answer any and all of your questions. So all remember, all we need from you is a copy of your transcript and unofficial, your unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume, and that will get the application process started. If you are an international student, we do encourage you to apply sooner rather than later because you know, there is a backlog in the visa process. So we do encourage you to apply sooner than later. There is no deadline for the application. We do operate on a rolling admissions basis. All right, so that you've heard from myself, you've heard from Romel about the program. Uh, now we'll turn it on over to you to answer any questions that you may have. I do see that we have two questions already in the chat. So I'm just gonna bring it across here and answer, start answering questions. So please just submit though any questions that you may have. Romel is also still here and he'll, he'll happily answer any questions that you have that may be specifically geared towards him. So the first question we have is, what are the, cor the courses cross-listed with MMA and MMAI? Uh, we do not have any courses for our program that are cross-listed with MMA or MMAI. Those are two different areas. We focused on finance. Whereas MMA, which stands for the Master of Management Analytics, they focus on analytics. MMAI, which stands for Master of Management in Artificial Intelligence, they focus on artificial intelligence. So there are no cross-listing of courses for these two programs, for our program and these two programs. Thank you for the question. Okay, Romel, we have a question for you. Are you still there with us? Yes, sir. All right, so the question for you is, what would be the value added of an MFIN after having successfully completed the CFA program? I think that's an excellent question. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good question. I get asked yeah. that often. So, so the way I would put it is that there's so much theory that you can learn in finance, and I think most of the theory is covered in the CFA. So yeah, obviously there's a bit of overlap, but but the difference is, is really... Um, and the, uh, the practical applications of what you learn in the CFA. So first of all, the teachers that you get uh, in, the, in the Master of Finance are industry professional. And so most of my personal learning was happening after the class. So when, I, when the class was done, I would go to the teachers, the professors, and I would spend maybe 30 minutes to an hour talking with them, talking about the industry, learning about more than just the theory, learning about the practical applications. And... And so for me, knowing the theory made it easier for me to, 
to to do all the other things that were value add from the program, such as QAF, such as the case competitions, such as the networking. So there's a lot of networking events that are happening with uh, the program that really puts you on the spotlight for all the recruiters in the bank. So I've met a lot of recruiters from the banks. I met people from uh, all all over the financial industry um, because of that. So it, it's 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 not only the theory that you learn in the master. It's also a huge networking platform. Um, and, and and not only that, um, I know right now the CFA program, you get to learn the financial modeling. That wasn't the case during my time. Uh, so I learned a lot from the financial modeling class. I learned a lot from the communications class. I think that's very important, and that's not something something you get from the CFA program, the communication. Um, what else? It's also all the people that you meet, the alumni. Uh, so, like, for example, I'm still in contact with all most of my friends that I met during the program. Yesterday, Jazzy was here. I don't know if you remember him. Of Gary, course, yeah, I do. Calgary. Yeah. He came from Calgary yesterday, and so we had lunch yesterday, so... So Jazzy's, um, he, he's, he used to be a student with us. Um, and Yassine was there too. We, we went out, uh, we had sushi. Oh, fantastic. Um, and, and yeah, so Yassine was, uh, was, my, was probably my best friend in the program. And so he joined Scotia Bank before me and he, he allowed me to join the bank as well. So yeah, anyways, just to, to summarize, it's, 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 all, it's, uh, it's a lot more about just what you learn. It's also about uh, the opportunities to meet people and to, to learn about the practical applications of all you learn within the CFA program. All right. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. And I, I think just to expand on that, like the, the CFA and the MFIN program, the MFIN program is a complement to the CFA. We're not trying to compete with the CFA designation. It's a great designation to have. And I think there are so many people who are CFAs right now, the MFIN program is, a, is one of those distinguishing factors. It helps take you to, to another level compared to everyone else. And I think Romel was able to utilize definitely he utilized a, a lot of everything that the program had to offer. And we're, I'm happy to hear that you're still in connection and still in contact with a lot of people from the program. That's excellent. Okay, I think I see another question coming in. It just says, hi, Romel, at this point. So my assumption is that the person is still writing. So I'll just give them the opportunity to, to finish that question. Uh, please, if you have any questions, this is the opportunity to ask them now. Um, and Romel can tell you about his experience in, in the program and his experience, I guess, in the workplace. Anything that you want to ask him, I, he, he'll happily, happily answer. So I'm just going to wait uh, for the person to finish the question because it just, it just says, hi, Romel, for uh, right now. Okay, uh, there's, there you go. So the next question is... Uh, I'd like to connect with you for guidance because I'm trying to transition from core accounting and taxation into finance. I don't know if you have any advice for this person or if you happy to connect with them on LinkedIn or I, I don't know what they, what you would like to do here. Yeah, sure. Maybe I can, uh, I can answer the question. Um, and I'm also happy to connect on LinkedIn. I don't know if I have much time to, to go on coffee uh, for the holidays because i um, we're pretty busy right now, and then I'm I'm leaving to Montreal. Uh, but to answer your question, I'm happy to connect on LinkedIn, though, just to, to say that. Um, maybe we could schedule something else later. So to answer your question, there's a lot of people who transitioned from accounting to finance, including my boss, who who who, who was working in the and one of the big fours as an accountant who was doing audit for a few years and then doing equity research. And a lot of people come from from the audit and from an accounting ba background into equity research. And I think it's a, it's a transition that could be done. It's not an easy transition, but it could be done. And I think this program really facilitate that transition because you learn all the, the knowledge that you need to learn to be able to make that transition. So it's, if you haven't done the CFA or if you have done the CFA and you're in accounting, I still think this program is gonna help you transition. All right, thank you. Yeah, I do, we do have a lot of people who come from the accounting um, we have we have people who come from psychology. Uh, everything is, is really about people's interests and their focus on getting into finance. And I think Romel summed it up really well when he talked about his dedication and his focus and drive into getting into the position that he wanted to. And he worked with the career coach early on to find out how can he make this possible. And he really took the advice to heart. 
I think Romel is like one of those great examples of somebody really utilizing everything that the program had to offer to get to where he wanted to be in his career. So thank you so much for that, Romel. I, I think that's all the questions that we have right now. And uh, so I think I, I thank you so much for your time. And I think Romel was saying that he's happy to connect with anyone who has any more questions on LinkedIn. Uh, maybe some people don't want to ask the question in this forum, uh, this environment. Maybe they want to have more of a private conversation. So please feel free. Romel, thank you so much for agreeing to do that. Um, oh, wait, actually, we have one more question. So I'll, I'll, maybe we'll take this last one, if that's okay with you. Sure, absolutely. Actually, wait, I think this one is for, this one is for it's me. Probably maybe. for you. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll answer this one. Uh, so the final, so thank you so much, Romel. If you want to hop off, you can hop off. Or if you want to hang out until the end, that's more than fine. We'll just take this final question. But I, I thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Gary, for having me. Appreciate it. All right. So the final question that we have is all elective courses have core importance. What courses you did? What core? Oh, sorry, Romel. It is actually for you. My apologies. It is actually for you. He wants to know, um, this person wants to know, what courses did you choose considering the rapid technology change happening in the market, like AI and finance is important and so as financial technology. So I guess they're asking you what elective courses you chose and why. That's a great question. So I, I picked um, investment banking and, and alternative uh, management because my goal was to get into capital markets. And uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do investment banking or equity research. Uh, my goal was to, to work at a hedge fund eventually. And so that's why I took the alternative one. And I wanted to learn more about investment banking to see if it was good for me. And so these, these are the classes I took. But I heard the AI and finance and the, fin and the fintech classes were really interesting. Uh, some of my friends took that. Um, but uh, it really depends what you're trying to accomplish with the program. And so that's why I think it's good to have these electives so you can really pick and choose what's best for you. Yeah, I think that's I think that's excellent advice there. So thank you so much, Roma. I think that'll be the last question. But yeah, it really depends on what's important for you. And I, I believe I can it's fair to say, Romel, back in your days, AI and finance, like it wasn't as hot as it is right now. Like not to say it wasn't a thing, but I feel like it really picked up over the last year or so where you hear about it constantly. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't that uh, that it wasn't that hot back then. AI, but fintech was though. Yeah, fintech was always there, but it slowly. So you can see we were all we were almost not really a first mover on this because we saw where yeah. the market was heading. So we've been offering this course for a few years now, but it's really really picked up steam now. Anyways, that was our final question. Thank you so much to everyone for joining. A reminder that. Um, if you are registered, since you are registered for this information session, you will receive a copy of the recording. I want to say a special thank you to Romel for taking time out of your busy day to join us on this call to talk about your experience in the program, to talk about your, you know, what you're doing right now. We're happy to see all of your success following the program. It's really great to see. And we look forward to seeing you in the next week or so when you will be joining us in person at Smith Toronto to be part of our careers and finance panel. So really happy that you have agreed to join us there. So we look forward to seeing you. So thank you again. For sure. Thanks, Gary, for having me. And looking forward to seeing you next week. Oh, finally get by to the, see you. Way, I have my, uh, my degree right here. I don't oh, know. yeah, I see. I see them. It's far <laughs> away, but that's awesome. That's yeah. great to see. Well, congratulations on all your success, man. I know you're going Thanks, to go to do much more, uh, more, much more fantastic things. So really appreciate it. Thanks, Gary. It was great to see you today. Great to see you too. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who was uh, able to join us on the call. We hope that you have a great rest of your day. And if you're interested in joining the program, remember a reminder that all we need from you is an unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume. And you could send that to smithqueens.com slash mfin. And then we will work with you for throughout your application process. All right. Have a great one, everyone. Take care. Bye.